as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. What's going on, guys? Trip Young here for a special edition of Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, so we, we had to bring a, bring a couple of baseball experts uh, <laughs> onto the show with us for, for this one. Uh, but before we introduce our guests, let me introduce my co-host, Eric Sanchez. What's going on? What's going on, my man? You know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we're a few days away. I wasn't sure we were going to get here, but now that we're here, I can't wait for the season to start. That's a fact. And, and of course, my main man, Will, what's going on? The, the, the other Yankee fan in the building. Absolutely, guys. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate this. And, you know, everybody's hyped up about the Yankees. I'm just hyped up about sports coming back. This is going to be a very interesting month of August coming up for sure. And, you know, not only does baseball have the floor, but basketball has the floor, hockey has the floor. But this is a baseball preview, so let's talk some baseball today. That's a fact. And uh, shout out to, to Shawnee as, as, as well. He was supposed to be with us tonight, but we'll, we'll get him um, get him back on with us at, at some point in the near yep. future. Um, so shout out to you guys over on the board of sports. You Thank guys you. have been putting out a, a lot of content uh, the past uh, couple of months, taking advantage of this uh, quarantine. You got it. You and, got uh, it. And at home. You have to. You know, gotta take, I've been saying this on the show daily. You got to take the advantage of the situation given to you, and that's what Sean and I have been doing. And, you know, it's been a really, really great time going out there and recording episodes with Sean, having multiple guests on, and you got to take advantage of, of a bad situation. So, you know, you got to make good out of it. So we're, 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 we were there doing it, and it's been great. Absolutely. Well, well, I want to – I mean, I know we've spoken before, but we always salute you guys for the work that you do out there um, because we know during the quarantine – uh, it, it showed. It showed the people that were putting out the content and, and really right. um, catering to the people that had to be at home. And then there was those that took a little absence because they just couldn't keep up. So we salute you guys. And that's why we always enjoy having you guys on the show. Thank you. We really appreciate it from On The Board Sports. And I can only speak for myself. And I know Sean, if he was here, he'd probably be saying the same thing. So we thank you. That's a, that's a fact. Glad you guys are back with us. With mm -hmm. that being said, Baseball season is on the horizon. Uh, opening day is, is coming up very soon. But there is one team, however, that we are not 100% sure exactly where they're going to play. Of course, I'm speaking about the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Toronto, uh, Canada, has, has denied them uh, you know, access to, to, to playing in the stadium. So they are actually they've, – they've been asking around, asking their friends around the league. Who's got a stadium? Who can who can we uh, who can we borrow from? Who can we whose uh, spot can we use? Whose house can we come over to for Thanksgiving dinner to get that extra plate of food? Um, but what do you guys think? Do you, um, I mean, I'm I'm hoping by by their opening uh, day game they have a location. Um, but how 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 big is this that that the the Blue Jays don't have a, a home stadium right now? This is absolutely huge for Toronto just to go out and. Play on American soil, number one. Number two, there's not going to be any fans going out there playing. Number three, with everything going on, you have the NHL, basically. You have all the Eastern Conference teams playing and having their hub city up in Toronto. And how close it is from, from uh, Rogers Center to where Scotiabank Arena is, it's just absolutely going to be unbelievable up there. But not only that, but just to see what's going on, We've heard Buffalo come out. We've heard Cleveland come out and talking about uh, having their games. This is just absolutely unbelievable news that you're not going to see Toronto up in Toronto, but there's no fans. So either way, it makes it makes somewhat sort of sense. And not only that, but, you know, with baseball, 
it's America's pastime, and you're seeing all these people now going to be coming up to the Canadian border and playing up there. It's unfortunate that Toronto is the only Canadian team in the major leagues, but they don't want to have an outbreak again. They don't want to have an outbreak that, you know, of COVID-19 and such. So realistically, for the Canadian government, they're, they're looking out for what's really going on and what's, you know, what's the bigger picture here for, for the city of Toronto. Yeah, I think it's, it's huge, but in a bad way for a number of reasons. One, Toronto has been in this rebuild mode for a few years now, and they've got a couple of young, very talented players that they won't get to showcase in front of, you know, in front of their own uh, stadium. Even though the fans won't be there, the right. fact that they've got to now play every game on the road is a little bit of a negative for them. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, we know that this season is going to be condensed down to 60 games within 67 days. So that's a uh, very high demand on a team to say you've got to play every game on the road and we've got to figure out where these games are going to be played, where you guys are going to be staying at, how will you guys be able to practice beforehand. So there are a lot of elements that I think already get thrown against this young team that was trying to figure out a way to compete against the juggernauts like the Yankees. Um, for Major League Baseball, it's not that big of a deal if they can figure it out ultimately because they want the games played and we want to see the games played. Uh, but for the organization as a whole, I don't think it's a good look. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, the fans are already not being there is, is, is a thing in itself. Because, I'm, you know, I mean, as players, who, don't, who doesn't want their, their, their home crowd, their rooting them on, giving them that extra burst of energy. Um, but and when, you, when you're talking about it, we're not even going to be in our own stadium. So you now you, you lose even more of the home field because now you don't even have that level – of comfort that you would have uh, playing in your home stadium. Like, you, you know, you mentioned, Eric, as far as we don't know now, the, the practice time is going to be different because now we can't just come and go as, as we please. we got to figure this whole thing out, figure what we're going to do. I know they were talking about Pittsburgh, but there's been, as of now, there's been nothing uh, definite um, in regards to them having a stadium to play in. So I definitely think this puts them at an advantage, especially, you know, with them being a younger team. Um, I think if they were an older team, they'd probably be able to deal with it a little bit better just because, you know, the veterans, they haven't been through so much. Something like this is like, all right, whatever. We're going we're gonna to play baseball, and, and that's going to be the end of it. But with a lot of younger guys, to really get them to kind of lock in and get focused on the season, they kind of need to have that, that home base worked out already. Right. And, and you consider, um, you know, again, with the amount of games that they're playing in a short amount of time, now these guys can't even stay in their own homes now. You're going to basically be on the road for the next two months, which is unheard of in sports. No team ever goes on a road trip for two straight months. And these guys are now going to have to live out of a hotel, live out of bags, and try to figure out their day-to-day -day life while they're on the road. Yeah. And not only that, too, but we get to see what Charlie Montoyo is going to be capable of being the Blue Jays' first-year manager after replacing John Gibbons. So... There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on this uh, first year manager's plate for sure. Yeah, you're already dealing with you know with everything, all the complications because of COVID. But now you're a new manager coming in. You don't even get to go to your home stadium to to start your first season with the team. So it's got to be be rough. Um, I'm sure things will ease up once they actually have an, an idea of where they'll be playing this season. But right now, while things are still up in the air, I know it's got to be be a little stressful. Um, for everyone in the organization. Absolutely. But uh, listen, hopefully they'll get it together uh, soon enough. Because, again, we only got a few more days left before before the uh, 2020 season begins. Um, we got uh, Dr. Fauci, who will be throwing uh, the, the uh, first pitch at the, uh, the, the Nationals uh, opener. Um, but do you guys think that we're going to run into an issue with COVID? Being that Major League Baseball is not being played in the bubble and there's still going to be the traveling and so many moving parts? Absolutely, 100%. You know, you, you talk about the Blue Jays earlier. They came out and they basically had a, a system in which they were going to find players if they weren't in their hotel rooms and not going out there and, you know, following these rules for, for sure. I think it was like $750,000 I saw if a player did skip curfew or break, break some of the rules there. But regardless or not, you look at New York, right? Let's say the Yankees and the Mets, for example, playing here in New York. 
Yes, they're going to be following their own protocols, everything like that. But realistically, who's going to stop these players from going out there, trying to get food or trying to go out there and, and get some something, trying to get some fresh air at all, stuff like that. Anything can happen here from here on out. And the weather is hot, so this weather has been known so far from what we've seen to kill this virus so far. There's no cure yet. And also, with everything going on, you know, the, the cold air is going to be coming soon. Is there, They're going to be having these playoff games. If there is, if there is any playoffs here, uh, is it going to be at a neutral site? Is it going to be, you know, we don't know that yet. So we all have, we all have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah I think it, we still haven't cleared all the hurdles when it re- in regards to uh, Major League Baseball because we know Florida, the numbers continue to spike, Texas, Arizona, yeah. um, which all host Major League teams. So I think there will be some hiccup at some point. Um, only thing we can hope for is that it's something very minimal, uh, maybe a guy here or there and it's an isolated situation. Uh, but as you also mentioned, Will, you know, we can't stop who these guys come in contact with away from the field. So if a guy decides to go and get something to eat or hang out or a guy decides to go see a girl that he's been dealing with, like we can't stop any of those interactions that could potentially put them in harm's way of of Mm -hmm. getting the virus. So I think there are still a lot of hurdles to clear, but the fact that we're this close and nothing's come up yet is a good sign so far. Yeah. I think um, my, my fear is, you know, a guy contracts it and now he has to miss two weeks Maybe not so much during the regular season because I think they'll be able to compensate for that. But, you know, like you mentioned, we're going into into the playoffs. Now we're talking about the weather changing, the temperature coming down. You know, God forbid you lose a guy like Aaron Judge for two weeks in the playoffs or or, 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 or Bryce Harper or, or, or Matt Scherzer, one of these top guys, and they got to be quarantined for two weeks during the playoffs. You could be bumped out, you know what I mean, early in the, in, in the season. Or, or, or you got to play a wild card game, and now you don't have your, your ace because he got he's got COVID, and you know what I'm saying. Now you now you out of the playoffs real fast. So that would be my concern. Um, I I wonder if 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 Major League Baseball is doing some kind of bubble prep for the playoffs, just because once we get to that point, we know all right, there's only going to be this many teams, so it, it is possible. Or us, if, if if there's no vaccine or anything like that, come you know come September October where we can bring all of these teams together into a bubble type uh, situation just for the playoffs. Um, so I don't know if they if, if they're actually game planning something like that, but that would just be my fear as far as with COVID because I think if it's just one or two guys during the season and you got to miss two weeks, we'll we'll look at it as you just being on on the, on a DL, um, you know for for a little while, then you come back and you get back in the swing of things. You know, and guys will just have to fill in for you. But in the playoffs, you lose key guys because of COVID. That's going to be rough to bounce back from. Absolutely. And we're seeing it now for the first couple of weeks of the season. So, you know, we got to see DJ LeMahieu obviously miss out on a couple a couple of weeks, even though it's not regular season time. I believe Austin uh, Meadows, or the center fielder for the Tampa Rays, contracted the virus, and he's going to have to miss it two weeks for sure. You know, who knows what's going to happen here at this point in time. And, you know, we all, we all have to take it one day at a time at this point. So. Yeah. It's two weeks. Yeah. And, and, and Trip, you, but, uh, I was going to say, Trip, you brought up a great point about a bubble for the playoffs. I would, I would have to assume that that has to be a, a discussion going on right now because we see the way the schedule has been laid out and you're only playing teams within your region. You know, the East is playing East coast team, the West. So, once we get into playoff times, you're going to want to eliminate those East Coast teams flying West and vice versa. You're going to have to come up with some sort of system where those teams can eliminate that cross-country travel to have to play each other. Right. Now, the only thing is, so now um, there's, if that is the case, though, then we're not, there's not going to be no, no, no home field uh, for the World Series, though, because especially if there's a bubble, because it's just going to be wherever the bubble is at, which I, if, if that is the case, I would assume it'll just be in a central uh, location, as you know, what I mean, for, for everybody to get to, and then that's it. We're, we're locked in, so they so it may not be no no home home field going into the playoffs. It's now it's, it's just it's it's all about who's who's better on the mound that day. Absolutely, and not only that too, but think about that from the playoff perspective with the playoff bubble idea. 
uh, guys, you look at, let's say if right now, like in the NHL, right, you have five games a day. Obviously, you have three and two, and you have uh, hockey all day, right? Now you're looking at it from the playoff perspective for baseball. You know, in hockey, you could have unlimited overtime until sudden death. Now with these new rules coming in for baseball, you know, having a runner on second base, what is that going to happen as far as the playoffs come? Are they going to still have the runner on second base? Is there going to be a time limit here as far as what's going on to keep the next game going on? Players got to warm up everything like that for the next game. But that's something that, you know, for, for it to happen down the road. Yeah, they, yeah. they've already they've already announced that they're not going to do the runner on second base in the oh, playoffs. No. Yeah, okay. it, yeah. It'll be, it'll, right. Yeah, it's it's only going to be regular season. It won't be for the playoffs this year. However, they will explore to use it in the future. Gotcha. Um, and and the same thing with the DH rule, as we know that the National League will use the DH this year, and it's kind of a test study for them to see if they want to move forward with it permanently. Correct. Um, but but as you mentioned, well, yeah, it, it's a lot of different things. If you throw a playoff bubble in, how many games would you have a day in the bubble? Right. Um, you know, how early would these games be starting? Because typically a playoff game starts at 7 p.m. And guys are accustomed to that. So now if you're telling me we got to have four playoff games all in this one stadium, guess what? We got to start these games at noon. We got to get these games going as early as possible. Right. And that throws guys rhythm off because you can't get to the ballpark and do what you normally do. Right. They've had, they've had the noon start times in the playoffs because of the 10 teams over the past, you know, five years. That we that they've been doing even prior to that they've been having the day games on, you know. But we got to see what happens at that point in time. But it's going to be a very interesting time. Make no mistake about it. Yeah, it's you know the thing about it is it's pretty much everything is going to be trial and error going into the season because we don't know one we don't know what to expect and two we don't know how long you know this COVID is going to be a threat to, you know, to the United States, I mean, to the world, really, but if we just, you know, particularly with, with sports, we don't know how long this thing is going to take effect, so everything is kind of trial and error, trying to keep the players safe as trial and error, um, you know, I know they're, they're doing a lot of testing, and it was, it was, it was a small percentage of the players that were, that actually tested positive, and, and um, as far as the coaching staffs as well, it was a small percentage, but, you know, that small percentage can, can, can escalate really fast, Yep. If guys aren't aren't doing the right thing, um, you know, but I'm 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 hopeful, you know, for the season, um, especially if they wind up doing a bubble, just because I'm liking what I'm seeing from the NBA uh, bubble right now, and I know they just put out a, a new uh, set of results where where every player tested um, in the bubble right now was negative for COVID, so I, you know I think that this thing can be done with baseball. Especially, you know, when you look at the fact that, you know, guys don't really come in contact with each other in baseball as they do in, in other sports, you know, with the exception of when you're tagging somebody out. So I think that as long as the players are conscious of what they're doing and really kind of still being in quarantine with, within themselves, keeping it straight, home field, home field, you know what I'm saying, not making too many extra stops, not doing, not having the, 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 the Dak and uh, Zeke parties. Hmm. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that they can definitely work this thing out. Yeah, I agree. I, I think they could make it happen. Absolutely. Same here. Now, and go. I want to go back to Dr. Fauci. He's a small guy. Does <laughs> does and I'm going. Does does his pitch is his pitch better than Fifty Cent's pitch? What y'all think? Can he, can he can he get it across the plate? He he may not get it across the plate. Um. He he may throw you know he he may the catcher may have to save him there but I think it'll okay. he'll have better aim than fifty did. It's yeah, amazing. Also, he's a science guy, so I mean, hopefully he, he may have the numbers down. Where it's like, all right, if I throw it at this angle or the curve or the fast, you know, he can get, he can get that in there. Fifty was just you know that was just over the top. I don't know what happened. Well, let's look at it like this too, right? Fauci is obviously the doctor that's going on everything like that. You got to see what's going on with what happened with uh, back in 2001. George Bush threw the first pitch. It was a strike. Everything like that. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Dr. Fauci to go out there and throw a strike. And basically, you know, Mr. Bush went and he gave the thumbs up afterwards saying everything's okay. It's a sign. Uh, not only did he throw it over, but everything's fine, you know, in the country. Maybe Fauci pitches a perfect strike and basically tell, tells the TV cameras or 
whoever's in the stands, like, hey, thumbs up, everything's good. You know, maybe anything can happen like that. So, if so, if he gets it over the plate, strike and right in the strike zone, that's right. it. COVID's over. I, I'm not saying COVID's over. I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, thumbs up to like, you know, hey, everything's no matter what. As Americans, we're gonna make it through. That, oh, no, that's, know, that's, that's just that's a fact. just a right. positive message. Yeah, yeah, right. If he if he if, if he throws the strike, it, it's almost a symbol of like we're on our way back. Everything looks yep. better. But we should be asking too, like you said, in regards to Dr. Fauci, is he going to be throwing off the mound or is he going to be in front of the mound? Because remember, well, sometimes the they let you throw in front of the mound. Right. But then does it count? I don't know if that that, that makes me feel comfortable. Everything's going to be okay if he didn't throw from the mound. Well, considering his considering his age, I, I would give him the pass on it. How old is he? About it was in his in the seventies, right? Was he in his eighties? Right, and considering his age, <laughs> but, he, but he's a doctor, so he's probably keeps himself in good shape. I'm just saying, you know, what I'm saying for his age, right? So but I we got to see, right, like, see Doctor Fauci, but we got to treat him the same I'm way we treat some, some of the old timers. We got to we got to treat him the way we treat some of the old timers, though. And when the old timers game, they don't pitch off the mound; they pitch from right in front of the mound. Right. All right, he's 79. I just I just checked out the number. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Okay, I just found out something. All uh-huh. right, right now that I didn't know before, but now that I know this is going down, he's definitely pitching off the mound, and it's going to be a strike. I just figured this thing out, and I'm going to tell y'all why. Okay. He's from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn. That's it. It's <laughs> over. He's from Brooklyn. He's got it. It's going over the mound, and COVID's out of here after this, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from your mouth to God's ears, Anthony. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'm I'm trying. I'm out here trying. Uh, but we do we do got some news coming out of coming out of Queens. Uh, A Rod and, and his uh group of buyers is still uh trying to finalize things and and, and bring the, the 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 Mets uh, um into his possession. And he may be the new owner. Him and uh J Lo and a couple of other people that have been working together for the past couple of months. Uh, Eric. This is this is your area of expertise here. Um, are you comfortable with a with a Yankee, uh, a, a champion uh, Yankee, coming over and running the Mets organization? You might get some of that championship bravado onto the Mets. It might help y'all. I'm I'm comfortable with it for a number of reasons. One, he has always admitted that he grew up a Mets fan, even though he ended up playing for the Yankees. He was a Mets fan growing up, so I like that. Uh, secondly, the group of buyers that he's coming in with are, are star-studded, um, and it sounds like they will come in and open up the checkbooks right away, which we didn't really see the Will Ponds do over the last 10 years. Um, and then, I mean, if, if it means having Jennifer Lopez at City Field on a consistent basis, why, why would I be against that? <laughs> I can agree with you a thousand percent on that because, you know, this, and this is, I can say this because this is before she was with A-Rod. She was actually, I think she was messing with, um, when it was Iglesias at the time, one of them dudes at the time. But uh, she, when I went, to, when I was going to post, she would jog. She would come out and jog on uh, on one of the, the old tracks or whatever. So you know that that kind of gave me extra extra motivation too to you know to, to for that sport. So I can I can feel you on that one. Right. I, I you know uh, that from the visual standpoint would just be amazing. But ultimately, if if they're willing to spend and make the team a winner, I'm all for it. From this perspective, though, right, if A-Rod did become the, the Met owner, and like you said, he, he was a, a, a fan of the Mets growing up, obviously, growing up there in the days of Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry and the 86 Mets uh, being relevant. Let, let's look at it like this from this perspective, too, right, over the past couple of years that we've seen A-Rod in the, the media spotlight now since he retired from Major League Baseball. He's got the eye for talent. He knows how to go out there and scout for players, it seems like. He's bilingual. He could go out there and, you know, make connections. He's trying to be uh, an entrepreneur at this point in time with his post-playing career. You would think it would be great, but with everything that's gone on, too, outside of it, you know, you look at everything that's gone on uh, with with the steroid stuff that went through out his, in his career. You look at the, the whole media attention with him and J-Lo being over there, you know, with uh, – him being this this god, everybody. I met a Rod. I met a Rod at the ALCS, and I can tell you, he's he's cool. But it's really you, you just look at it. It's all about the persona with him at that point in time. You know, it's really all about the persona with him. And he's re, you know, from what I saw, it looks like he's really into himself at that point in time. So let's say if the team does lose 
And all the attention is going to be going to the owner no matter what. So we got to see with the Wilpons, the only reason why the Wilpons haven't spent any money over the past 10 years is because of the fact that they were a part of the, the, the Ponzi scheme with Bernie Madoff. So there's a lot that ultimately has to happen here for, for it to succeed. And with Steve Cohen being this businessman, hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not a Met fan, but I do have some sympathy for the Mets and for their fans. Just go out, whoever it is, just put a winning product on the field and just, you know, it's like being a Jet fan in, in the Giants, in the Giants uh, town here. Just go out there, win games, and the fans will love you back. That's how it's always been over the past, you know, 50 years uh, with both the Mets and the Jets. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 do, I do understand the point of view of the – if, the, if things aren't going well, the, the, the blowback will be on A-Rod and the ownership group. And I, I do get that because he's so high profile. Um, but I think you, you take that and it comes with the territory. You know, if you want to win, you need somebody who's willing to lead you in that direction, is willing to say, hey, look, I'll open up the checkbook and we spend whatever we got to spend. Um, now, it also is going to take the talent evaluators, the scouts, the managers to develop that talent and make it into something. It's not just going to be about opening the checkbook. Uh, right. But... I, again, I think he's a guy who wants to win. He understands what it would mean for the Mets to be a winner. Um, he understands, look, a couple years ago when the Mets made their World Series run, I know it's a Yankee town. I'll be the first to say that. We are not competing with the Yankees. We are the little brother to the Yankees. You can't compete with what the Yankees have done in baseball. But when the Mets were competitive, it made the city exciting because now we had two teams that had the potential to do something. So same thing when, when the Mets and Yankees faced off in 2000. Again, it was it was little brother against uh, little brother against the big brother, but it was exciting for the city as a whole. Um, the the steroid scandal that doesn't bother me because at the end of the day, I think, and I might be in a minority in this thinking, a lot of that gets overblown based off of how the writers of baseball view it. You know, we forget that for a long time steroids were not illegal in the game. So when we come down on these guys for testing positive after years of never testing for this stuff, we got to understand that, yes, the game had changed, our mindset had changed, but a lot of these guys were still playing the same game that they had played in the 80s and 90s where this was okay. Mark McGuire got a job within baseball. No one comes down on Mark McGuire for having a job. So if Alex Rodriguez wants to own a team, he should have that right to own a team. He, he absolutely should. And, you know, just to go back to your point, just with the biogenesis and everything like that, he went on Francesa, he, he basically made a mockery of it, lied about it, and then it came out and he wound up getting suspended anyway for it. But that's all over. That's all in the past. But you let know? me ask you a question, Will. Sure. As, yeah. as a Yankee fan, yeah. knowing, knowing the quality of playoff run he had that year when you guys won, that was what, 2009? With 2009, CC, right. With CC, CC Burnett, Teixeira, right? yeah. A-Rod played well that year for you guys. If it wasn't for him, there would be no World Series. I'll admit that. So are you willing to give back that ring? Am I willing to give back that ring? Yes. I, hey, listen, I don't know if he was on the biogenesis at that point in time or no. not. But what, the, point, the point I'm making is, whether he was or wasn't, you can't take back the feeling and that memory of that run. Right. Once it's you done, can. it's done. Right. That's it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so the, the Yankee, my Yankee fandom won't even allow me to entertain that question you just asked, sir. I can't even entertain what, what you happened? just said right there. My Yankee fandom wouldn't even allow you me don't to have entertain to. that question. <laughs> right, right. I'll be the first to say, look, Anthony and I had this talk th through text uh, about a week ago, right? right? And there's this whole talk about an 86 Mets, Mets documentary coming out. And then I said, great. We'll hear about how Keith Hernandez was on cocaine, how Dwight Gooden was so hungover right. he missed the parade. We'll mm -hmm. hear about Lenny Dykstra's scam. We'll hear about all those things. But guess right. what? As a Mets fan, I don't care. We still won that year. So you can, right. you can say whatever you want about the team. What's done is done. You can never take back the feeling of when you won. That's right, one hundred percent. You can't. No, no, yeah, that's right. And now, so now, in a couple of points, Eric, I want to go back first to you because you made an you made an excellent point in one of the things that you brought up in your in your statement when you referred back to uh, the two thousand and uh, um, the, the World Series, the Subway Series. And I just have a quick question for you: Who won that one? Oh, uh, no. Well, I could I could tell you who lost it. It was Armando Benitez because he blew about three saves in that World Series. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, 
I'm sorry. I had to. I had, no. I had, to, I had to get that. Hey, I'm sorry. It's I'm all sorry. right. Listen, listen. Right. First and foremost, I, I mean, I, I live and die with all my teams. But first and foremost, I'm honest about it. We lost you guys. You guys were more experienced than us. You guys had the winning pedigree that we were yearning for. As I said, you go back and look. There were three games in that series where we were leading in the seventh inning or later that you guys came and took from us. We didn't know how to win games. You guys did. And that was the difference. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's always been in Yankees history, too. The Yankees historically know how to win games when other teams can't figure it out. Yeah. And, I mean, one, a large part of, of that is actually uh, Mariano Rivera and him being, you know, the greatest at that position ever. And, I mean, with, with two pitches Mariano got, two, three pitches, and, and nobody could hit off him. So that was a large part to that. But, uh, but yeah. going back to, uh, to A-Rod, um, well, you, you you know, I guess you kind of spoke about, I guess more so his, his 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 bravado, his swag, but you know what? That's needed because it's New York. So I think that's actually going to work in his favor. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because again, it's that New York state of mind. And uh, and two, I think that they're not going to have that much pressure on them right away to to win championships. So he'll be able to ease in. Yeah, you're going to want to get back to the playoffs because they were there a couple of years ago. Um, and, I, and I think that they definitely do have a great core. I mean, you, anytime you have a uh, back-to-back uh, Cy Young award-winning ace, um, Thor, um, they, I mean, the Mets, Mets pitching staff is top five, easy. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you got, you got Cano in there. You know, you got guys that, that, that know how to play this game really well. I think that they're just – there are a few pieces and health away from getting back into the into the playoffs, which would be which would I mean which would really be great for the city to see both the Mets and the Yankees. It's it's always good when you got the Mets and the Yankees are good at the same time. When you got the Giants and the Jets are good at the same time. Now, you know, if you can get the Knicks and the Nets to be good at the same time, that's always great for the for the city to to see those things. So yeah. I think A Rod coming in will be a, a huge asset for them um because of that. And then secondly He's someone that the majority of the of the league, you know, especially as far as the younger guys looked up to to Arod. Arod was the guy in baseball for a long time. Everybody wanted to to be like Arod. You, you know what I'm saying? He was he was that guy. So you know, when you're talking about free agency and whatnot, uh, you know, the same thing. We I guess it, kind of similar to with um, uh, was it uh, uh Leon um. Uh, from the from the Knicks that that the Knicks just signed, the, Leon uh, Rose, Leon, Leon Rose, Rose, right? So where he has that that kind of connection with the players, A Rod is gonna have that kind of effect as well. Where you know maybe guys that might not take certain meetings because it's the Mets and we're like, ah, do I want to go to the little brother team of the Yankees and you can't get that meeting? Now A Rod is the owner. Guys are gonna come in and and at least sit down and have those conversations, and then you you know you may see a couple more of those big name guys coming in and, and playing for the Mets now, especially since A-Rod has said he's opening up the checkbooks. Two things on, on that point. Number one, when you mentioned the fact that A-Rod and how players looked up to him, right? Let's say if you have a couple of those players that looked up to A-Rod playing and they wound up failing and they either get released. Now there's a bad taste in that, in that player's mouth for sure. If something were to go wrong or whatever, but that's, that's totally something that could happen down the road for sure. We've seen it with LeBron James playing with the Lakers. Many of the Lakers grew up liking LeBron James at that point in time. And then when LeBron went down and the team went on its skid and they found out that, oh, the trade rumors were happening, Magic, you know, the whole Magic Johnson sh- spiel happened, they, they were all blindsided by it. But that's just the reality of it. And those players have to understand that it's a business at the end of the day. And – you know that's that's pretty well, he won't much be on the, he won't be on the field with them though so right and, but there's but there's always there's always that larger than life personality to it yeah. and number and number two with the expectations alex rodriguez always demands a high standard for himself and in pro sports yes there will always be that high standard of excellence because there's always an expectation of you to go out there and perform now with that said arod is also a smart baseball guy he also knows that there's going to be a lot of things going on. You know, you don't need to get that all-star at every position. 
you know, you need to find somebody that's going to go out there and play that solid defense, almost like a Jose Iglesias type of player from he used to play for Detroit, I believe, and now he's on Cincinnati now or whatever the case is. But you got to go out there and have a, the right balance of talent instead of going out there and just trying to sign the best guys and go out there and try to trade for the best players. That's just something that you you ultimately need to have the balance of power. And that's something that A-Rod, I think, understands. But it's just that mentality of it, just like MJ going out there and demanding greatness out of all of his players. You just have to understand that sometimes it's the mentality of the player and you got to go out there and have that right balance of talent. And he'll, he'll learn. He'll learn that on the job, though. You know, one thing about A-Rod is he understands what it takes to be – the one to be the best player in baseball and two he you know from being with the Yankees he understands I mean this I don't think there is any more pressure that you can get in major league baseball than playing for the Yankees and having that history of all those championships on your right. back and, mm-hmm. and to overcome that and to get one so he definitely understands that and I I, I, I do believe that you know if, if he can actually you know wind up getting the ownership of the team I think he'll be able to instill that into the guys. Now, whether it be right out the gate or, you know, whether it takes two, three seasons for them to really get to that point, but I, he has it. So, and, I, and I think he'll be able to pass it on. But if you listen to A-Rod speak, you know, anytime A-Rod's announcing the games, like you could just tell, like, he, he has that. You know what I'm saying? And it's right. easy for guys to kind of pick up on that from A-Rod. So I think he'll, he'll be good. My last point on A-Rod, though, with everything going on, with the Met fan, the Met fan wants wants to will pond sell the team. There's going to be instantaneous uh, this this instantaneous feel like, oh my God, we're going to win now. We have an owner. There's you know he's going to open the checkbooks, everything like that. You know, let's temper our expectations here and just see what's going to happen. This this stuff doesn't happen instantaneously. Sometimes building a winner takes years to do and. You know, for Mets fans, it's been almost what thirty-four years since they last won a World Series. So, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm being. I'm being honest and upfront about it. I know uh, Eric definitely has the right to talk about it for sure. No, I mean, as a Mets fan, I think the the first thing we want to be is we want to be com- competitive year in and year out. Correct. Um, you know, understanding the game of baseball, and understanding aside from this year, of course, it's normally a very long season. A lot of things take place, and mm-hmm. you got to have some luck on your side to be able to win. You know, there have been plenty of times that the best team doesn't win at all because of injuries or some, something may not break your way. Um, so getting away from the Wilpons and whether it's Cohen, whether it's A-Rod, the, the immediate thinking would be is now we have an owner who's going to fully invest in the organization. Um, I think as an organization, we're in a good place. We have the best pitcher in the National League, if not in all of baseball. We've got a really good pitching staff. We've got Pete Alonzo. We've got Jeff McNeil. Um, we've got Michael Conforto. You know, we got veterans that we're hoping to come back like Cespedes, like Cano. So there's a core of good young talent there. Now the question becomes, is uh, Rojas, our current manager, the right guy? Is our scouting department going to continue to find guys that can move this thing forward? Um, but I think the biggest asset of having a guy like Alex Rodriguez as your owner would be his relatability. He's close enough in age to the players where he can relate to what they go through on a day-to-day basis. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked. When you have an owner who's in his 60s or 70s and so far removed from you, it's not relatable. It's just your boss. It's a guy that you can never go to and really speak to. But when you have a guy like A-Rod who you grew up watching and then you come across him on the field or in a dugout and you can ask some pointers, hey, what would you do in this situation? You know, what would you be looking for in this at bat? Those things can help elevate your whole organization. Um, and the, the thing with the Wilpons as Met fans that we're so frustrated with is it, it wasn't just the Ponzi scheme, the Madoff scheme that put us in the situation. It was just bad negotiations, bad signing, signing guys that were over the hill, signing Robbie Alomar when he was old, signing Mo Vaughn when he was old. We're, we're about to pay Bobby Bonilla longer than the Kansas City Chiefs are about to pay Patrick Mahomes. Like we're still paying Bobby Bonilla for, and he ain't played for us in over 15 years. So those are the things as Met fans that we just want to get rid of from the Will Ponds. You got to be savvier than that as an owner if you want your team to be competitive. Yeah, because I mean, listen. At the end of the day, you know, prior to I guess I would probably say like you know since you know when that whole thing went down, I mean the Mets were in the top five in salary, you know, 
pretty much, you know, every year uh, going back maybe like 10 seasons uh, prior to all of that going down. They were in the top five in salary. So they were actually, you know what I'm saying, spending money. But again, like I said, it's, it's got to be smart. The, the the spending has to be smart. You can't bring in these over the hill guys. You can't have contracts like Bonilla, so where you're still paying them. I was happy that the, that the Nets finally got Darren Williams uh, off they off their back a couple of weeks ago. You know he ain't been he hadn't been on the team for years. So yeah, they, they definitely got to get better with that. And I you know again I think I think A Rod will because he understands that. I mean I know he he did make his comments about salary cap, which I don't you know I don't know if he he maybe he was confused. Well, he, he didn't. He didn't say. He didn't say you should have a salary cap. He just said there needs to be a better understanding of revenue sharing and how salary is divided up. Um, but I, I just think a guy like a Rod, just the fact we're having this conversation shows you what type of life he brings to the situation. He brings a certain level of excitement just to know that hey, Alex Rodriguez could be owning the Mets. So that's something that I look forward to. And you know, if, if it's Cohen that gets it, so be it. That's fine. And I would love to see what his plan is moving forward. But we definitely need to just pump some energy into the organization because I just feel like we have a beautiful ballpark. We have a, a lot of good young talent, but it's just something missing. We, we don't have that electricity that we should have um, for a team that has this much talent on it. And a, and a New York team at that. Like this, even even, even right. with the Knicks not being a top-tier team, there's still that excitement of you want to go to the Garden still. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fans are still – the Garden is still selling out with them being bad. So, you know, you're still supposed to have that electricity being a New York team. Like, New York just has a, has a swag that's different from any place else in the world. No matter what the, you know, what the, what the sport is, what the team is, is that, that, that New York swag that is just uncomparable. Uncompar- so, you know, I think that A-Rod will definitely add to that. And, and it will bring a whole new level of excitement. That's going to bring a whole new set of fans to, 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 to Queens. That's because, you know, anybody that's an A-Rod fan, they're going to be like, oh, A-Rod is here now? Okay, I don't, I don't know about the Wilbons, but I know A-Rod. A-Rod, that's that dude right there. We, we, we might be looking to turn this thing around really soon. Let's see what happens down the road. Never know what could happen. Definitely definitely going to gonna, gonna uh, wait and see on that one. I, I hope A-Rod is, uh, is able to, to do it. I would love to see that. I was speaking to, to Will, you know, before we got started today and just, you know, just seeing – these sports come back, the NBA coming back in, in, in two weeks and, and Major League Baseball coming back this week. It just kind of gives you the feeling of maybe we're getting back to normal a little bit. You know what I'm saying? From all the damage that and all the loss that we've experienced uh, with COVID-19, you know, we need these positives to boost the morale of the people. And, you know, seeing, seeing our, some of our, our favorite people in the world get up and, and, and play the game that they love and the game that we love to watch will definitely, you know, motivate us and, and give, just give us a positive outlook. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that Major League Baseball is starting. Um, Eric, I want to go back to you uh, for this next topic because, again, you know, I got to, I got to give you your, your, your kudos, okay, your team. And, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really like doing that too, too much, Eric, you know, in this, in this matter. But I'm going to give you your props on this one. Uh, you know, you guys did produce – a back-to-back uh, Cy Young Award winner, um, which would mean that now we, we, we're looking at the three-peat. The last person um, to, 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 to three-peat the Cy Young Award uh, was Randy Johnson? I think it was, 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 was the last one. Nah, Randy didn't win three in a row. That, that, that won three uh, Cy Young Awards uh, in a row. Not but in a row. Guys, do you guys think that um, that that uh, that he can do it? That uh, Jacob Degrom can do it? Um, so I, I want to start off by saying that Trip, I'm offended, bro, because you know there have been plenty of instances. It's documented. Granted, it was all the times that we had the bar on the show, but I've I've praised the Yankees, and I and I even sat there and and I vouched for Joe Girardi when I felt he got a raw deal, bro. So I speak highly of your team on a regular. All right, but um. I think the Grom can do it. It's going to be very tough. He's looking at because it's a sixty-game season. He's probably only going to get somewhere in the range of about twelve to fifteen starts. So he's going to have to be damn near perfect to win it. However, he's been damn near perfect for the last two years. When you look at the the, the lack of run support he's gotten, 
And the fact that he won a Cy Young one year with a losing record, that's how dominant he was. So he can do it. He's going to have to be on his A game. We got a little scared the other day with his back, but they say he's ready to go. He's expected to pitch on opening day. And I'm be rooting for him because in my eyes, he is the best pitcher in all of baseball. Well, the good thing is everyone, every pitcher, I mean, has to be damn near perfect. So the playing field is pretty much even uh, from that regard anyway. Um, and again, it, it was uh, Randy Johnson who was the yes. last person to, to, to three feet. He uh, won three 90, in a row? Yes. 99, 2000, and, and, and oh, excuse me, with the four feet actually. 99, 2000, and uh, 2001, and 2002. I would have, I would have assumed it was Maddox, but oh, hey, Randy, shout out to Randy. Maddox won it four times in a row as well, from '92 to '95. Yes, so, there you go. Yep, and just crazy right there. Listen, does it help that Jacob Degrom pitches at City Field? Absolutely. What doesn't help now is the fact that you have in the NL now, you have the DH coming in this year, and the last time that we've seen such greatness, like. Trip alluded to was Randy Johnson back from 99 to 2002. Keep in mind, that was an expansion team, too, coming in from 99, going out there and winning the World Series just two years into their own existence, three years, excuse me, into their own existence. So with, with the Mets, there's a lot of things going on right now for sure. Is he the best pitcher in baseball? Hands down, yes. But there's also a lot of things that could happen, too. Max Scherzer is still one of the, one of the best in the game. Steven Strasburg's one of the best in the game. Aaron Nola, young up-and-coming pitcher, one of the best in the game. Walker Buehler, another pitcher that's coming up into his own with the Dodgers, finding his way and just going out there and moving and grooving. And, you know, there's there's a lot that, that could be said. And you can't forget about all, all the, uh, the NL Central teams, too, that have uh, such good pitching, including Sonny Gray from the Reds. So he's found himself last year. I picked him to win the Cy Young Award last year. And – he wound up putting up some pretty unbelievable numbers as well. So, you know, there's a lot that, that can be said, but there's going to be a lot of pitchers out there that are going to be going out there and just vying for that Cy Young Award for sure. i tell you one thing. He's definitely – it can't be a situation where he doesn't get the bat support, um, you know, like we've seen in, in previous years where he'll pitch an amazing game, but the Mets only put up a run. And you know what I'm saying, and, and he'll drop a, a couple of easy win games that he sh- that he should have had. He's definitely going to need, you know what I'm saying, just because what we're facing with the season and, and the shortened season, he's going to need guys to to, to the hitters to do their part. And not only that, too, with Degrom. Degrom's only well, he's past thirty at this point in time. I believe he's what thirty one, thirty two after signing that uh, that five year deal back back last year. So. It, you know, listen, sky's the limit with him, but there's also that that age question, too, that's going to come in. But he's pitching great. You know, look at Scherzer, same thing. He's up there in age, but he's doing his thing still. Steven Strasburg's entering his prime right now just about as far as, you know, in his life. So anything's possible at that point in time. Yeah. And it was actually the ground that stopped uh, Scherzer from, from getting the three feet. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I I still like Degrom's chances, um, but you know he he's going to need run support. He's going to have to stay healthy. Um, you know, it's going to be a couple times that the Mets are probably going to have to bail him out and and put up you know six or seven runs to make sure he gets the win. Um, but either way, I I like him. I like his chances. Um, he he's very tough to pick up, and I, I I think he can do it this year. Yeah, listen, he's got as good a chance as anybody. He's still one of the top pitchers in baseball. As long as he he can remain healthy and get a little bit, little extra run support, you know I think uh, Peter Alonso will, will will help out with that as much as he can, and I think Robbie's actually going to have a, a a good year for you guys as well. So you know we'll see. He's got like I said, he's got as good as a uh, a shot as anybody. And we we running low on time, but uh so so really quick, I want to get predictions from each of you guys. Um, who's going? Who's going? Who's going to the show this year? Who's going? Who's taking it all? I mean, obviously, you know, you guys know who I'm going to say, so I'm going to let you guys answer that question. Go ahead, Eric. Start it off first. I got a curveball for everybody, but go ahead, Eric. Start it off first. So, so the the homer in me is going to say Mets versus Yankees, um, <laughs> which I would love. With Cole, everybody would love that. Cole and Degrom pitching game one, the best two pitchers in baseball, going at it in game one. Um, but the realist in me thinks that. 
Atlanta might be ready to take that next step. Um, mm-hmm. We talked about this on, on the board sports when you guys had us on, Will. I, mm-hmm. I think Atlanta is ready to take that next step. They've been in the playoffs the last few years. I think they're, they're now grown up a little bit more with, with two back-to-back playoff appearances that they're willing to take that step to, to go. Um, and then in the American League, I'm still going to say Yankees, but I do think, and we didn't get into it today, I do think that the delay and the condensed season are going to be a major benefit to the Houston Astros. So I think it's going to be between the Yankees and Astros to go to the World Series. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to go. All right. Uh, Out of the AL, I'm going to go with the Rays. I'm going to go with the Rays here. Okay. The Rays, I feel like top to bottom with Kevin Cash as their manager, he could go out there, play small ball. He And especially with these rule changes now that are going to come into effect, you're going to see a lot of bunting going down. You're going to see the opener used a lot more, uh, especially in these 60 games that's going to be played out. I really like the Rays a lot. The Yankees, they – they always have this fascination with going out there, and Aaron Boone did it, Joe Girardi did it years prior, where they they use their starters and then they burn out their bullpen throughout the years. Yes, Garrett Cole is there, but again, who knows what's going to happen with him uh, come, come opening day and even down the stretch. And the Yankees have to go out there and learn how to hit for contact. The Rays last season were one game away from making it to the ALCS. And that game happened in Houston. We all know what happened with Houston now, now more so than ever. And out of the NL, Eric, you're going to love me for this one. I'm going with the Mets. I really, really like the Mets here this season just because of the fact that you look at what what they've been through over the course of what happened. Do you look at what happened with Beltran? Beltran's gone. They got the new manager there in place now. The bullpen is way better than it was last season. And – you know, with the rotation that's in place right now and with the, the depth, this is probably top to bottom the best offensive depth that the Mets have had in such a long time. And, yes, yeah, Syndergaard's not there, but they still have Stroman. They still have Rick Porcello. They still have DeGrom. They could go out there. They, could, they have Michael Waka. They, I, I'm, I'm sold on the Mets. Anything can happen in October. That's, that's, that's part of me going out there and saying that, you know, you could go out there and have the best record in baseball, but that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we got to see what the Nationals did last year. And in the wild card era, we got to see a lot of wild card teams go out there and win. So the bottom line here is don't go for the favorite this year. Go for something that's going to be a curveball. Rays versus Mets. Rays are your 2020 World Series champions. Now, now Will – I'm completely disappointed in you that you would even say something like that. And what I would what I would bring up to you is I would like for you to go back to that pizza shop that you took us to, which they had an amazing pizza. Pugsley okay? Pizza. <laughs> yes, I would I would ask you to go back there and we'll go with you and you say what you just said inside that pizza shop, brother. Because I think you know you might have started a revolt up in there if you said something like that. Okay. Now, secondly, what you said about you know getting that getting that contact in the in you know in, 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 the, in the hits, uh, you know, and whatnot, I would have to quote the late, great Bambino, Babe Ruth, when he said, well, they ain't outside the park, so that's where I like to hit them. And that's where the Yankees like to hit them, outside in the park. And that's how we you see every year the Yankees are top five in home runs every season. And that's what we're going to do. We're coming for 28 this year. And damn it, I'm going to get my chance to say the Yankees got more rings than there are teams in Major League Baseball. I – I just think uh, I, I like your predictions, Will. Um, I really like the Mets one, obviously, as a Met fan. But what I and, and I said this to Trip. The reason I do think it could be a Yankees Mets World Series is the DH really benefits the Mets because if not for the DH, I don't know if they had a place to play Cespedes. I think they right. were going to be stuck trying to figure out how to get him into the lineup and preserve his legs. And now as him being the DH, that opens things up. Where it's like now we can keep that bat in, and in the days we give Cespedes off, Cano can DH. So for deep teams like the Mets, like the Dodgers, the DH is perfect. And then obviously, like you said, our pitching, DeGrom, Stroman, Porcello, uh, Michael Walker, veterans like that. But then also – Steven Mats forget, too. Forgot Steven about Steven Mats. Right. Steven Mats. And I think the bullpen bounces back this year. I like the Tampa – I do like the Tampa prediction um, based off of the rest of that division because I think it's Yankees, it's Tampa, and then there's a big drop-off. So I can yes. see Tampa, Tampa getting in as a wild card just because they're so much better than the other teams in that division. And they're going to feast on Baltimore, on Toronto, 
on Boston. I think Tampa gets in as a wild card, but then it, like, it gets tricky at that point because, again, the, the Yankees lineup is so deep. Houston lineup is so deep. Um, let's not forget that, you know, uh, Cleveland is still good. Minnesota is still good. I like Tampa getting into the playoffs, but that's, that's a lot to ask, Will. I, hey, listen, anything's possible come October. One question I have for you guys, though. Sleeper team. I know you guys are running for time. Sleeper team, one from each league. Who do you guys got? Well, I don't know if the, if the, if the Dodgers is a sleeper team, but, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I got the – I'll take the Dodgers. Um, as far as in, in, in the, the American League, jeez, uh, man, it's – Who's a sleeper team in America? I'll probably say maybe, maybe ah, I don't even want to say. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one, man. That's, what would I say is a, is a sleeper team in the American League? Does do the do do the do the Angels count as a sleeper team? Yeah, they count yeah. as a sleeper yeah. team. I guess I, I guess maybe the, the the Angels. I don't know, but I, I just I feel like at some point uh, Mike Trout has to do something. In the playoffs and get them, you know, somewhere at, at some agree. point. So maybe this is the t- this is the time. It could be, could be for them. Yeah, right. I, I think, um, I think in the National League, a sleeper team to watch. I like the Reds a lot, but I really like the Phillies. Uh, they get Andrew McCutcheon back after he was out last year, mm-hmm. and they added Zach Wheeler. As you said, they also have Aaron Nola, so now they have some quality at the top of their rotation. Their bullpen is shaky, but I think it's just too much talent on that team for them to flame out again. Can't forget um, about Didi for them. Right, Didi over there. So Some it's a, it's a lot of talent. We love you, Didi. It's, we love it's, you always. It's, it's it's a lot of there's a lot of talent on that team, and if they could just figure out their bullpen, I think they'll be in the mix. I like the Reds, like you said, with Sonny Gray. Um, in the American League, it's tough because I think it is top heavy. Houston, New York, Tampa. I like Minnesota a lot, but Minnesota doesn't have the pitching. If I had to guess, I would say Oakland. I think Oakland could be the surprise team in the yeah. American League. Oakland, that's a fair choice. And Oakland always has teams that go out and, you know, find a way to win, even though a lot of experts oh. don't have them just because of their whole money ball and projection. All right. Well, listen, guys, once again, this will actually be dropping on opening day. So you guys will get to – we're going we're gonna to drop this right before the first game on uh, opening day. Um, again, I can't say nothing else, but but uh, but let's go Yankees. You guys want to get a, get a final thought in there? Will, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me on again. Yes, I know I'm a diehard Yankee fan, but you know, with everything going on, with everything going on, sometimes you got to go with the curveball here in, in, in the 60 game season. So I, I like the race, and I've been I just let you know when it. we go back to the pizza shop. Well, uh, hey, on. listen, I'll, I'll do it again. That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll have the conversation no matter what. But thank you guys again. Really appreciate it. And, you know, I wish my partner was here uh, talking some, some baseball with us. I know he would have definitely loved it. But, you know, just in general, thank you guys again. We really appreciate it. And one of these days, you guys got to come back on our show. Well, that's a fact. We're we definitely going to be there. Eric? Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. Um, make sure you guys are tuning into On The Board Sports. Make sure you're tuning in to Real Fans, Real Talk. And I'm looking forward to it. We have baseball kicking off this week and NBA kicking off next week. So it's a great time to be a sports fan. That's a fact. Um, I'm just going to end it off. Make sure you guys are subscribed to On The Board Sports uh, Podcast as as well. Um, and, um, and we got a whole lot of stuff going on in, in between uh, Real Fans, Real Talk, and the extended family. So make sure you guys are, are also subscribed to the Sanchez Show, Shooting the Sh, and uh, you guys can actually officially – get the podcast version of Real Fans Real Talk as well. Um, so make sure you guys just keep following us, man. RealFansRealTalk.com, Twitter, Instagram, at RealFanTalk, Facebook.com forward slash RealFansRealTalk, and subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. We got a whole lot of, of, of stuff coming up for you guys, a whole lot of surprises, actually. You know, Quarantine TV, we've been working. So we're bringing a whole lot of uh, new stuff to you guys. Uh, but for myself, Trip Young, Legend of Two Games, Eric Sanchez, and Will Carucci on the board sports. Man, we up out of here. Peace. Live from the camp. Four lines. Five the Uh-huh. This is Five Real plans. Fans, Real Talk. talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans, Real Talk. We
we the illest of course Real fans, real club, we the illest of course Real fans, real club, we as real as we